man uh shy d let me ask you how did you how did you get into djing because obviously you were djing back then you were scratching and stuff so if you, you've probably been a dj and a rapper i'm guessing right how did that happen you wouldn't believe it i was a dj before i was a rapper a guy from philadelphia taught me how to dj that's why i got both of the cdjs on the left side and my mitts on the right that's the way they was djing out of philly back in the day a guy named special k taught me how to dj but what we was trying to do was well, what I was trying to get them to do was we start a rap group. So, but I wanted to be the DJ, but Special K was the DJ because he taught me how to DJ. So he was like, yo, man, you need to rap because your voice is different. Your voice is real distinct. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, I, I, I mean, rapping is cool, but I'm more on a D. I want to be the DJ. So... Once again, I put my ego to the side and started trying to write some raps and stuff. So it was Special K and I forgot what our name was. I think we was called up the three MCs or something. You know what I'm saying? So it was me. And I know y'all familiar with Tony MF Rock, right? Yep. We went to high school together. Oh, you know, I got him as deal with Luke. Tony wow. MF Rock. Yeah. Um, I produced a song for him called She Put Me in a Trance. That's a jam. Yeah, you remember that song? So, yeah, yeah it was me, Tony, MF Rock, and Special K, brother, <clears throat> cool, cool D. So we was, a, we was a rap group in high school. So that's how, basically, the, the rap thing came about. And then, I'm sure, how did, it, how did you transition? Because, okay, you started DJing, then you started rapping. But yeah. then, obviously, the rap probably took over for a while. When your career, your music career took off, you had so many hits. I'm sure you're performing everywhere, doing clubs everywhere, yeah. stadiums, all that good stuff. And then recently, you know, when we linked up, I noticed that you're DJing, which tripped me out because, you know, we have that in common. Obviously, we're all DJs and uh, I've been DJing for probably like, I don't know, 30 years or so, whatever. But how did you yeah. transition back into DJing? You know, man, it's a crazy story. Let me tell you this story. Like I say, one of my favorite groups was Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. One of the members of the group, he, his first name was Mr. Ness. Then later on, he changed his name to Scorpio. Come to find out, he lived 10 minutes around the corner from me right now. Wow. So somebody told him about me, and I seen him in Walmart one day. So to make a long story short, he, he, when I met him, he was like, yo, man, you got access to a studio? I said, nah, but I got a nice little setup if you're trying to do something. He said, yeah, well, you know, me and Melly Mel is going back out, out on the road. And we need a show CD, you know what I'm saying? Like for me to put it put a show together for him. I said, Well, do you you got the songs and stuff you want play? He said, Yeah. So I said, Come over to my house. So he came over to my house and putting the show together was consistent of scratching and everything, you know, because I was supposed to be the Grandmaster Flash, you know what I'm saying? So I put the he he gave me all the songs and showed me how he want me to put everything together for him. So once I got through putting his show together, we were sitting there listening. He's like, yo, man, you're a dope DJ. You know what I'm saying? He said, um, do you work in the clubs or something? I said, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? I just sit around here and do this for fun, you know, just for the love of it. And he said, man, you need to go to get in the clubs, man, because you're a good DJ. Just so happened, one of my kids' mom, dad owned a club. That's the club I'm at now, Bigelow's. Wow. Um, and I went to her one day. I said, hey, if y'all ever need a fill-in DJ, I'm here. So they called me one day. The guy, I guess the DJ had something bigger to do. So they called me, and I DJ that night at the club. And uh, then uh, they came to me. I mean, the brother came to me. He said, hey, man, we want you to be the regular DJ here. So that's what put me back in the clubs, man. That's crazy. That's a crazy, <laughs> that know, is a crazy story. Huh? <laughs> How long you been doing that? Woo. 20, maybe, they, because they just had their anniversary, so they said they've been in business 26 years, so I've been doing it about 23 years. Oh, man, that's longevity for a DJ. Yeah, 23 it years. Hasn't that long? Yeah. Yeah, you know. That, that is crazy. That is, so that's Scorpio crazy. is my DJ hero from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Big yeah. influence. Yeah, no, big yeah. influence, man. That is that is so crazy. I would have never thought, and I'm sure people will be surprised when they watch this, just tripping out on how 
the roots of hip hop, you know, the MC, but also the DJing. You always you always touched on that in your songs, and that always spoke to me as being you know, being a DJ. I was like, man, he looks out for the DJ. He shouts out the DJ. The scratching. Those are hip hop elements, as far as I'm concerned. That that's what drew me to hip hop. You know, those yeah. elements. Um, and that's so crazy because these these new groups don't even have DJs on the song, scratching or nothing. You know, it's just all about the rapper and the producer. There, yeah, there's there's a, uh, I, I I can go into a long answer on that one, but I think <laughs> I think it's related to, I think it's related to the music industry and how it is now, how it's yeah. different. And so back at that time, DJs were given a lot more um, a lot more shine, a lot more props. They were part of hip hop a lot more, and I think honestly. You know, not to get too deep into, in my opinion, I think it has to do with there's financial roots to it. There's there, there's financials uh, behind it. Um, oh, yeah. I could tell you a story real quick. Can I tell you a two second story? Oh, for sure. Yeah. DJ Tunk was the one that produced T.I., right? T.I. Y'all know the rapper T.I.? Yep. 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 Make a long story short. When they put the album out, DJ, I mean, Tunk as Tip, can he go on the road with him as his DJ? And uh, T.I.P. said no because he didn't want to pay him a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, that that that. Yeah, yeah that's the stuff for real. Tune told me that I couldn't believe it. Huh? That boggles the mind. But that's exactly it's exactly what's going on, Shadi. <laughs> Basically, yep. people don't want to put up. I mean, and it's, it's so minuscule, right? You think about a thousand bucks. T.I. is probably getting fifty, hundred racks. I don't know how many racks he's getting, but it's like yeah. seriously, bro. You're worried about you. Because we look at it also like an art, right? Like every little thing we do, we want it to sound dope. We want it to sound clean. You know, how you make songs together. The whole thing is like, so you're so into it, right? But yeah. somebody doesn't want to pay for it. And they want to basically, you know, a shortcut. And so the audience gets less of a show. By the way, this is uh, totally related to what we're talking about. I saw footage. You were giving the DJ props when you did the show in San Jose, which I thought was dope. And let me tell y'all how this came about. My boy Looney Tunes. Y'all know Looney Tunes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I met Looney Tunes years ago. They brought me out, him and uh, Boy Wonder, DJ yep. Mike. Okay, they brought me out years ago. So to make a long story short, uh, Looney Tunes called me. He was like, yo, D, um, can I be your DJ on the show? So I was like, yeah, you know, cool. But when I talk, when the people call me the stage, people like who run the... the the music and stuff, I mean, the boards and stuff. Yeah. The, the, the stage manager was like, nah, well, you don't need a DJ because uh, just bring a flash drive and I plug it into my board, right? So I called call Looney Tune back with the bad news. You know what I'm saying? He was heartbroken, everything, but he was still cool. So make a long story short, we get to the damn show for sound check. We see turntables over here, turntables over there. It was three sets of turntables on the stage. So I'm like, I thought they said they didn't want no DJs. You know what I'm saying? So I'm pissed, right? I said, yo, Looney Tune, fuck that. He had his records. Thank God he had his 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 um little scratching records, right? So I said, uh, can I curse on here? I ain't mean to curse. Yeah, I yeah. got I yeah, just caught up. Yeah, yeah. I, I got mad right there. So <laughs> I went to the sound man. I said, yo, man, um, I thought you said y'all wasn't gonna have you don't. I don't need no DJ. He was like, well, uh, I didn't, whatever he said, right? I said, well, this is my DJ. Hook him up on one of them DJ sets up there. So I don't know who them DJs, who, who stuff that was. I said, Looney Tune, get on one of them sets, man. Let's do the sound check. And that's how it came about, man. Man, that is, man, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for supporting the culture, brother. Cause yeah, I, I fought for that, man. You yeah, know? no, I mean, it's such a big part of, of music, of hip hop music, as far as I'm concerned. You know, DJs, are the cornerstone it's part of it hip-hop. along with yeah you know, know what i'm saying and, and it adds to the show right his scratch yeah. it just sounds cool because somebody's performing live that's how we kind of grew up on hip-hop the dj adds flavor the same way like you cook a meal you don't put no spices i mean that's what it is to me it's like you gotta <laughs> yeah. show love to the dj and i'm so glad you did that bro that's i mean salute that is that is dope that is freaking yeah because i story. just did a show back in april in la and um they had a house DJ. His name was Ernie G. So I was like, "That's the homie." Yeah, yeah that's your homie, man. Yeah. <laughs> he did the sound check. Ernie G went to doing that scratching shit. Man, I said, a, "Oh man." He is an OG. Then, <laughs> yeah, so I asked him. I said, "Yo, man, could you do that tonight when I perform?" 
You know what I'm saying? He said, yeah. He said, I'm going to be your DJ. I said, all right, man, do all that scratching shit, you know. <laughs> you know so. yeah. oh, he, he's good people, man. He's been in the game for a long time, too, man. He's Yeah, man. So, yeah, so I definitely wanted Looney Tunes because of what, uh, what Ernie G did. You know, Ernie G, I'm up there singing, shaking, and it, chicka, 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 chicka. you know, it just sounds more alive, like y'all said, you know. It adds flavor to me, as far as I'm concerned. It just adds also that live aspect, right? It just yeah. There's, there's nothing like that live aspect. You know what I mean? It just adds more flavor to the performance. That's that's how I see it. That's how I hear it. But thank you for supporting that, man. That is so cool because you you didn't have to. You know what I mean? I mean, you being as an MC performing, you could just be like, oh, okay, you know. Yeah, it's oh. all about me. That ego yeah. shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, we got to that sound check. I saw them damn turntable set up. I said, yo, man, I got mad at a motherfucker. <laughs> I went Dude, to that man, I say, the, the, yeah, I said, yo, man, I thought you said it wasn't going to be no DJs or something. Yo, I didn't need a DJ. He, I said, yo, man, this is my DJ, and hook him up on one of them sets up there. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe yeah. you thought it was going to be a financial thing, and you was going to ask for more cash. Huh? <laughs> maybe the promoter thought you was going to ask for more money, you know? Oh, no, nah, the, the promoter, he's super cool. Uh, right. Y'all know uh, Alan Beck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's super cool. I mean, shit, because... I only charge them 15 cents for my little concert shit. And I know Stevie B and them got thirty, forty thousand dollars You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know. Man, well, hopefully, hopefully, uh, we're gonna put your your contact info, man. I, you know, that'd be dope to get you more, uh, get you more exposure, get you more shows. I mean, yeah, so much, so much love, man, for for taking the time. Let me ask you, uh, what? Um, One of the last questions. The the podcast is called Tacos and Turntables, right? And Tacos the reason we turntables. the reason we called it that is two two things that everybody loves. Like everybody loves turntables, right? You mentioned yep. the turntables on stage because to me it represents music. And the other That's thing right. is tacos, right? Some food, some good food, and music. Two okay. things everybody loves. There's a lot of negativity out there, man. So much craziness. So that's what we named the tacos and turntables. So I got to ask you, either your favorite tacos of all time that you, you've eaten somewhere or your favorite taco spot, if there is one nearby. If you can tell me any kind of taco story, man, that'd be dope. Man, you wouldn't believe it, man. I don't like tacos. <laughs> I don't. But it's a place on the other side of town in Atlanta. It's a Mexican restaurant. And... My cousin came down here from New York and she loved tacos. So I was like, she said, I get there, whatever, whatever. I said, well, shit, do they have a fish taco? She said, yeah, they got fish tacos. I said, well, let me try that, man. And I, I ate it and fell in love with it, man. <laughs> no joke, man. And this was just like last year I got turned on the tacos. Well, Shai D, man, let me ask you, what you know what the name was? Because you want to shout him out below. I'll put it in the description so let people know, like, hey, you want to try yeah. the tacos that, you know, Shai D's Shai D yeah. favorite tacos? Go to this spot. Yeah, it's on the other side of town. I only been there two times, so I, I can't even remember the name of the spot. It's on, uh, it's in College Park. College Park, okay. I live in, I live in Decatur. Decatur, right. Yeah, I live in Decatur, Georgia, but that's College Park, Georgia. Okay, well, we'll, we'll uh, you know, I'll try to find the name and uh, somehow. And I'll try the to name start with a C. See, okay, I'll try to look it up, man, and I, I can I can put it in the description. And it's on um, Old National Highway. I know. Old that. National Highway. Okay, I'll find yeah. it. I'll find it. No worries, man. Okay. No worries. Next time um, you come to the desktop, I'll bring, take you to the taco spot out here. Oh yeah, I right, sound good. You as know long as we got fish, those fish tacos, man, that that'll be dope. Yeah, you know. <laughs> man, Shadi, so uh, do you have any uh, your contact info, uh, bro? If you want to uh, let us know, like any contact info, we can put it in the description. People want to get a hold of you, you know get in contact with you for shows or just say what's up to you, anything like that? Yeah, I give out my cell number, man. I'm not a star. They can get my <laughs> cell number, my email address, you know. Man, thank you. Man, I, I that's one thing, man, I have to say. Uh, I'm really, really thankful that you're so humble. Uh, I'm so blessed. Uh, I feel so blessed to be able to talk to you, man, and connect with you um about hip-hop about music and just the positivity of it bro i mean uh like i said i've been a fan and uh you know not not to go too much into it but long story short uh i ran into somebody that i didn't know that knew of me djing and whatnot and okay. i told him about the podcast and um 
they're watching some of the episodes and, and they literally, him and a couple of DJ buddies asked, man, that'd be dope if you interview Shy D. Get out of here. And I thought to myself, man, if I can get a hold of Shy D, I would love that. Cause you know, yeah. it, it's just, you know, like I said, I've been a fan and it just so happens obviously through the internet, we were able to link up and whatnot. Okay. But, uh, no, man, you got, you got so much love out here in California, Northern California, Southern California yeah. and everywhere else. You know, man, you so, wouldn't believe it. Y'all wouldn't believe it. I really want to move to California, but you know, I'm scared. And what I mean by that is because I DJ for a living. You know what I'm saying? I DJ for a living. So I, I was always scared because y'all style of music is way different from over here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They play that ghetto shit over here. Yeah. California music is uppity, dance, dance, dance. Which I I love that kind of music, but I was always scared I could never get a job if I move out here on the DJing tip. Yeah, you know what I'm makes, saying. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's it's just a different style, but honestly, man, you, with your with your amount of talent, bro, I don't think you're gonna have any problems. I mean, you're so so talented, man. You, I mean, DJing, rapping, everything you're doing is is so successful and so positive too at the same time. And I think that's freaking super super dope. So I have a question, real quick. Yo. So, so you know, over here, we're getting beat up by this Bad Bunny uh, artist. Do they ask for Bad Bunny in Atlanta? <laughs> Man, you cannot play that. Sh you play that in Atlanta, you might get shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'm really telling you. That role was over here. <laughs> Man, Atlanta is ghetto, y'all. Trust me. You know, this This is like a very, very, it's got to be 80% black people over here. Yeah. What what are some of the artists that you generally play out there in Atlanta? Um, well, me, I'm a you know I'm a grown and sexy type man, so you know I come in, I play the old school like um, everything old school, Luther Vandross, you know, yeah. um, um, Tevin Campbell, you know, can we talk, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And then R and B, R and B, yeah, yeah. But then later on in the night when the the thugs and the killers come in the club, you got to change it up. So that's when I start playing the future stuff. Little Baby, yeah. Little Wayne, Little TJ, Little this, Little that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you might they fit very into a club here, that, though. There, there's a club called Palladium that plays a lot of that stuff over here, believe it or not. They play that kind of music? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, V used to work at that club back in the day. Yeah, I was there for about... Man. Seven years, man. It's pretty. It's pretty crazy, bro. But I mean, uh, crowd I must be thirty do. years old and down. <laughs> well, they, they have multiple <laughs> rooms, so they got folks oh. playing Spanish for some folks over here, you know. But then they have the grimy room, you know what I mean? Okay. Brother, you know, I think it in the hip hop room, Shadi. I'm sure you can handle it, bro. Trust me. It'll huh? be, you know, the hip hop room is all hip hop and R and B. That's all I played. I'm sure you could definitely knock it out the park in that room. It's just oh yeah, yeah. You know, cause yeah, like I say, man, I'm. I'm 56 years old, and don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with none of the new music. I really like a lot of the new music, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I can't play that shit <laughs> for six hours, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to change it up. Because like I say, you see, one thing about me in the club that people like, I still play songs like Planet Rock and Play At Your Own Wrist and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the old people, they catch a flashback when they hear all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? The older people, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's timeless music right there. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Set uh, it off. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my yeah. mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know well, Huh. Well, I'm going through well, the I say we play those records along with like Shake It, you know what I mean? Like that's what that's one of the like if you're doing a set, you're gonna play one of your records along with Planet Rock, stuff like that. You mentioned like Gigolo Tony, you know, that kind of stuff. You mentioned Luke. All that stuff to me is like a big set that we would do, you know. Hey guys, we're back with MC Shy D. It's the Tacos and Turntables podcast. Man, Shy D, so uh, let me ask you, man. I know a lot of people would love to hear you 
uh, on some new tracks or some new music and stuff. Is there any plans of that, or uh, is there anything you're working on or plan to work on? Nah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm too old, too old in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I was a, if I was to have any plans on making any kind of music, I would like to make some, some up tempo dance music. You know what I'm saying? Man, that would be, uh, man, because people are such fans. I, I think people will definitely want to collab with you on that if you wanted to do that. Producers, DJs, you know what I mean? To, and who knows? Maybe. I'm hoping that, you know, you'd hop on the track, you know what I mean? Like with your vocals, because you have a very unique style in your voice, man. A lot, there's millions of people out there that love your, your music, man. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you change your mind, bro. But, uh, but that's, you know, I just wanted to ask you about that. And uh, okay. honestly, just honestly, thank you, man. Thank you for, for being so real, for being so humble, for being so talented. Absolutely love your music, man. And like I said, so many other people do also. So hopefully they love this interview. And, okay. Uh, you know, just uh, I feel blessed, man, to get a chance to, to talk to you. Like I said, I've been a fan for so long, and uh, the the stuff that we talked about, man, it was it was uh, so cool, like a piece of hip hop history, as far as I'm concerned. Some of the stuff we talked about, how the production, how the songs were made, the the stories you were telling us about the scratching and the traveling, and this, you know, just the whole thing. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, man, salute to you, brother, and thank you very much, man. Shai I uh, feel blessed that we got to talk to you, man. Uh, hopefully we can meet in person someday. You can sign those records for me. If you're ever oh, yeah. in uh, in the area, Northern Cali, well, okay. we'd love to meet you, man. And just uh, thank you again for blessing us with this, with this dope interview, man. All right. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome, man. Thank you.